Welcome to the Brew Crew Review Podcast, the show by fans for fans of your Milwaukee Brew. All right, Brew fans, welcome back to another Brew Crew Review Podcast. Joining me tonight, of course, is Vince and Scott. How are you guys doing? Hey, Craig. Hey, Scotty. Hey. Hey, uh, is Chad on? I know that. I know that Chad was talking about being on today. Uh, is he on? Um, I think he said that he was going to um, uh, pay on his town hard of car pie. He's not doing anything. I thought he, I thought he was going to Tom, uh, our colleague Tom Hodger Court's retirement party uh, tonight at some local bar in West Dallas. But uh, yeah, maybe the I. The drunk maybe uncle? Yeah, it could have been the drunk uncle. You never know. <laughs> it's a Tom Hardicard exclusive, everybody. Yeah. Head on down there. All right. Well, well thanks, um, unfortunately, <laughs> the baseball lockout is still happening. Um, here we are in the middle of January, and uh, there's been some negotiations started at least, even though, you know, they took about a month and a half off for some reason. Um, so the latest, I guess, is the owners are going to give a revised proposal this coming Monday, and I'm sure it will still fall well short of an agreement. But I don't know. We'll stay hopeful and uh, hope things um, start going. Um, there's a couple other things coming up here. Obviously, this coming Tuesday, there's a Hall of Fame uh, ballot uh, or vote, and the, the announcement will be made on who will make the Hall. Um, Yep. Those questions in the in a rapid nine coming up, but uh, I don't know if you want to briefly comment on that at all. Maybe Vince or Scott. Uh, I'll just comment that from a Brewers fan's perspective, I guess that uh, you know I don't think that we have anyone that played for the team that's likely to get in. I I know that both Gary Sheffield and Prince Fielder are uh, on the ballot. I don't suspect that either one of them are going to get in this year, but um, you know that's that's something to keep an eye on just as a baseball fan I, I i think we'll probably talk more about it in our rapid nine but um we did see a pretty large class of guys get in during the veterans committee vote uh including tony oliva and jim cod and Minnie minoso and um it, it was a pretty pretty large class considering so um i don't know if they're going to be joined by anybody this year or not my guess is that there'll be one or two guys that do get in uh, on Tuesday, but we'll we'll save that for our rapid nine, perhaps. Yeah, that veterans committee. I was talking with Chad before, and he said, "Yeah, I, I, he kind of thinks that all these players are going to go in through the back door this year." But I don't know. <laughs> that hurt his phrase. I don't know what he meant, but he considered it less of a way of getting in, <laughs> apparently. But well, at this point. Um guys that are known that are still on the ballot that are known are, are kind of being punished for their attachments to the steroid era and allegations or whatnot or um a lot of those guys don't seem like they won't make it most likely possibly at all uh in their eligibility so is it your take that yeah majority of those guys will eventually get in on the other committee ballot and whatnot uh, or do you think that a few of them the writers will eventually come around and, and let's a couple of them. And that would, you would certainly think would be no brainers. Well, right. And it, and it seems like writers who dealt with some of these guys didn't like them on a personal level. And I'm talking about Roger Clemens and I'm talking about Barry Bonds and I'm talking about Kurt Schilling. And that, that's, I think a little unprofessional, you know, it's, it, it, you know, in our, I, I guess we've got some colleagues like, Tom Hunter Court, who kind of explained why he didn't vote for these guys. But I, I tend to think that, you know, if you're the major league all time leader in home runs and you didn't get accused of betting on baseball, you probably should be in the hall of fame. I just don't know why. I, I understand that there's going to be a standard that's enforced when it comes to performance enhancing drugs. I just don't know where that line is drawn. Um, you know, we've seen other guys who are in the hall of fame who have had some allegations, but nothing has been proven. So is it, okay, you had to be listed in the Mitchell report or you had to be listed in the Balco investigation. And if you're listed, then you're out. I mean, none of these guys have really received a proper trial. And we've been litigating this stuff for years and years at this point. I mean, the Mitchell report came out in 2005. So I just don't know how you keep a guy like Barry Bonds or a guy like Roger Clemens out of the Hall of Fame based on the numbers or based on his impact on the game, because I can guarantee that 
either one of those guys would be first ballot Hall of Famers if it wasn't even prior to the, any sort of allegation of using any performance enhancing drug. But, um, you know, there, there probably is an ethical line that has to be drawn somewhere too. So it, it, it really is a tough act. I don't have an answer. I just, I think that is an interesting question. And I, I don't know that any veterans committee is going to do anything differently, at least in the next 20 to 30 years. I mean, it's already been a year. We in now 2022. 20, it's already been, you know, 17 years since the Mitchell report, nothing has been done that that's at all changed anything from that point in time. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Like, I think at first people were kind of doing the uh, um, sort of like, let's take a stand and not make them first ballot, you know, and then it just kind of kept going. And <laughs> I just, I don't know. I, I think that there's some, some voters out there that probably look at the list right now and they were kind of fed up with the whole era in general and they just kind of say, eh, doesn't the hall have enough players? <laughs> yeah, so. but, 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 but Scotty, we've got guys and you know, this isn't a knock on him per se, but a guy like Harold Baines is in the hall of fame and a guy like Rafael Palmero doesn't even get 10% on a ballot uh, in his, Final year of eligibility. The guy's got over 500 home runs, 500 and over 3,000 hits, which, which are like the best. And over 3,000 hits. These are also these are like automatic guaranteed entry points to the Hall of Fame. And in, in past years, Gary Sheffield has 509 career home runs. I mean, I know that he's got a, a history where many Brewer fans don't like him, and fair enough. But um, the fact is, is he was a great ball player. He had 509 home runs. And absolutely, if the Marlins had fans, I'm sure they would root for him. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, he did win a World Series there too, and he, you know, he played on some good Yankees teams, a good Dodgers team. But he had the um, nice World Series. I know, I know, but <laughs> but but still, but still, I, you know, I guess I'm just saying that these guys who reach these these career benchmarks, like the 3,000 hit plateau, like 500 home runs, that in another era would have been an absolute no-brainer. Guys who are in the Hall of Fame. I mean. Again, Harold Baines or guys like George Kell. How do you argue that these guys, these Bill Mazeroski, how do you argue that these guys are Hall of Famers and a guy like Barry Bonds isn't? It's just it's kind of crazy to me. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's tricky. And again, it's like you're kind of tarnishing. If this happens in the long run, you're going to kind of tarnish the Hall. Because, I mean, if you leave out guys like Bonds and Clemens, who were arguably like the best hitter and pitcher of their generation they're possibly like multiple generations to be quite honest um like probably in the last 50 years there's not two two guys a better pitcher or better hitter than that so i mean um yeah i mean right interesting i mean it's tough to justify having that out of the hall of fame but of course you know they've kept heroes out and whatnot so i mean yeah the interesting thing yeah well the, the, the baseball hall of fame that is really intriguing to me is like the baseball hall of fame because of this whole process and because of the dialogue that gets formed around it, it, ha- it seems to be have so much more interest in the, in the world of sports than let's say the pro football hall of fame or the basketball hall of fame. And obviously it's a totally agree. superior sport, but, but even with that being said, um, you, those, no one really seems to have any talk or discussion or there's no dialogue, but any of those other, like they're usually just like no brainer shoe ins and, uh, to those other no, stories. yeah, yeah. Is it, this well, debate, and I think it's something about the process that uh, and and this whole steroid thing and the and the controversy that surrounds it, I think, adds to that. No, I think that you're. I think that you're right, Craig. Baseball has, for good or for bad, it has always been held to a higher standard. Uh, historically, I think that that's just true. It's because it's our national pastime. So as that game i think that that people do hold even people who aren't even baseball fans hold baseball to a higher standard than other sports and i mean i know that nobody even watches football anymore uh i, I don't even know of anybody that does but still you're right it's like nobody even has any idea about who is in any years given hall of fame class for football i have no clue um any year who's getting into the football hall of fame baseball it is it's bigger news but um you know, right now we're in this weird situation where the all-time hits leader and the all-time home runs leader is not in the Baseball Hall of Fame, and it, it just—it's mind-boggling. And I'm not well, I think that's that what you... is wrong to keep them out. I just am saying it is—it's—it's it's a very weird fact. 
I don't know. It's it's probably like a good microcosm of America today where like both sides are just kind of digging in their heels and then, you know, not really listening to the other side at all. And they just have their opinion and that's what it is. So, but when you said before like that, you know, this is something that could turn us to hall if these guys don't get in. I think both sides of the fence are thinking the exact same thing. Like if they get in, they think it tarnishes it. If they don't get in, they think it tarnishes it. So what are you going to do? I guess tarnish it. <laughs> I mean, and then if it gets so tarnished, you would think that the players aren't going to care one way or another if they get in, but but it's just like this dialogue that it's created and the discussion. I don't know if it's a good thing for baseball, but I mean, if, if you keep having people talk about your Hall of Fame, there's going to still be interest in it. And again, I think they have that over other sports, so that that's one thing, I guess. Um, well, I think, what... the, I think the people do care if they get in, except – we did see for the I it's the first time that I can remember Craig that um, Kurt Schilling said he didn't want to be elected to the Hall of Fame, and his his case is a little bit weirder because it's for political reasons, and I, I don't want to get into all the politics here on this podcast. We try to keep this a political, but you know he he's an outspoken political guy, and I I think that he was implying that he was being kept out for political reasons, and he basically said, I don't want anything to do with it. Now I've never heard Barry Bonds or Roger Clemens or some others who are being kept out clearly for the allegations, whether true or not, that they were using performance enhancing drugs. So it's a little bit different, but it, it is interesting that Schilling was the first guy that I heard say he, he didn't want anyone to vote for him for the hall of fame. He, he didn't want to accept it. Uh, the only other guy I can ever think of wasn't a player. It was Marvin Miller who got elected last year posthumously. Hmm. Yeah, and- I don't know. I, I mean, I hate to say it, but regardless of how anyone thinks about it, I, I kind of just think that this is what it, it's kind of like a sour grapes kind of thing where you're just like, fine, I didn't want to get in. Like, like if right, I went right. to a club here in Vegas or something like that, and they said, no, you're yeah. short and fat and ugly, get out of here. I'd be like, fine, I, didn't, I don't even want to be in your stupid club. I've never done that, <laughs> but I assume it would happen. <laughs> It is yeah, true, that, folks. that could be Scott fair. really doesn't doesn't but, want to be in a club, that's for sure. That is actually <laughs> true. <laughs> I think that sounds like that club in Toronto where I think you said something similar to the the bouncers there, Craig. Yep. Before punching that right tree. Right before he punched that tree. That poor tree didn't have any so like nothing to do with it. It's just in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> All right. Well, later on in our in our rapid nine, we'll have a, a few questions about the uh, about your hall of fame, hall of fame, uh, and who you think will get in, and who you, who you would vote for, and stuff like that. So keep that in the back of your head, yep. and the fans. Uh, that's a little. It's called teaser for later. But uh, in the meantime, we're going to talk a little bit since there's not much going on. I don't know if we're allowed to talk about these major leaguers like we are, but uh, I think that my leagues are still uh, wide open and we can talk about them. So as actually Craig, because we didn't, we didn't renew our press passes or whatever, uh, because our interns dropped the ball. I, I think that we're not subject to MLB's lockout, but um, you know, oh, we can talk about the minor leagues tonight. That's, that's fine. Awesome. Well, well, that other guy that tonight our passes, I can't remember his name. I think it was Chuck or something. I don't know. But, oh, well. Hope he's doing well. He's no longer. Hey, guys, I, I, I do have a quick minor league announcement um, that uh, former intern Lena just reminded me about. She said that uh, I should tell you all that there is a name change that came out today in minor league baseball or maybe yesterday. The Sugarland Skeeters are now the Sugarland Space Cowboys, and I am supposed to mention that here on the broadcast. For the AAA affiliate hmm. of the uh, Astros. Oh, that's good. Was there a name like offensive? A... Say that again. Was there a name offensive or? I, I don't know. Did they Space just... Cowboy? Space Cowboy. They got canceled. The like, wasn't the Skeeters a mosquito? Yeah, it was a mosquito. That's what it was. Yeah, that's what it was. It was a mosquito, and it was like this angry-looking mosquito, yeah. and they're. Yeah, and that's a derogatory like, name like to be called that. of a mosquito. Yeah, that's you know, kind guys, of BS. You, I wouldn't call them that. Me, I, I, I had malaria. I hate mosquitoes, so I'm, I'm glad about the <laughs> name change on a personal level. The Space Cowboys, though, I think that might be an, an homage to uh, Milwaukee's own uh, Steve Miller band. They're uh, the Oh yeah, that's Cowboys. right. Yeah. You, well, when we do get invaded, I think you'll change your tune. You'll have to change the name again. <laughs> 
Call them the Guardians or something. Yeah, uh, the Gangster of Space Love. Guardians. Gangsters of Love. Gangsters of Love, Scott. Yeah, there you go. Oh. Okay. Well, <laughs> anybody who don't have a Miller Park, it would have been perfect. <laughs> So as, as longtime listeners of the Brew Crew and watchers of the Brew Crew Review have known that uh, back in when we started the show, uh, the team, the Brewer Fielding at the time in <laughs> Miller Park wasn't exactly that stellar. However, we were finishing toward the bottom of the standings every year, and we had very high draft picks at the time. Uh, and, the, and the likes of Ryan Braun and Prince Fielder and all those, and, um, you know, were, were really giving us a strong farm system uh, at the time. And it was really exciting knowing that we'd have good players coming up eventually. Um, now that the Brewers have had sustained success with making the playoffs for four years in a row, um, they don't get as high a draft picks, and uh, the farm system takes a little bit of hit. I mean, it's a good thing, obviously. Um, but, uh, you know, with that being said, the Brewers' farm is not as strong as it always was. But I, I do think there's some real good talent there. Um, a couple of, of uh, things that the uh, international signing date was uh, January 15th this past weekend. And the Brewers did land two of the top 25 rated by Baseball America um, international prospects. They signed um, both 17-year-old uh, shortstops, Johan uh, Barrios from Venezuela, and also Johnny Severino from the Dominican Republic. So that's I'm, I'm glad that the Brewers were, um, you know, in on those signings. And uh, everyone they they have had some signings over the last. 10 years from the international class and not a lot of them have worked out. Um, but um, I know that Edward Perez is, was one from a few years ago and he's, he's in our top 10 prospects. And uh, so there's some excitement for these guys that they just signed. That's for sure. But being, yeah, the- I mean, I'm glad that we're taking part in it. I mean, obviously there's um, it's relatively low risk and you know potentially high rewards so yeah why not of course yeah, i'm just glad to see that we're actually out there the brewers are yeah a bit late to the game on this yeah um and so both of them 17 years old we probably won't hear much from them for a number of years but uh, as they make their way through the minor leagues but um you, you never know like a lot of these guys have really high ceilings with also what you call low floor as a, as a, as a large handful of them, you know, never pan out. Um, and again, when you're drafting 16, 17 year old from other countries, like that's just, that's just the nature of it. So, um, but uh, we're going to bring back well, up well, in the past, in past years, the brewers just hadn't put any money towards the Craig. I mean, that, that is something that the brewers traditionally had not done for many, many, many years going back to the, the seal regime. So it is to Scotty's point, it is good that we're finally, you know, doing something international. Do you guys know, is Solomon Torres still running a Brewers Academy in the Dominican Republic? Do you guys know about that? Mm. He did. He did. For glad you mentioned that. No, I don't. Oh, Scott, that doesn't make me glad to have mentioned it. If you don't know anything about it, could you please have your interns look it up? I guess I could just do it since I don't have any interns anymore, but I'll, I'll do my best. Thanks, Scott. But we don't have to wait in silence while I do it. You guys could keep talking. <laughs> um, For sure. I don't... This is, I'm sorry, turning out to be a pretty terrible podcast. Um, what? Is yeah. it? Oh, I don't know. The, inter- it's going great. The international, I mean, we, we, the Brewers have spent, uh, in fact, they spent $3 million uh, uh, even on one one player a couple of years ago. Unfortunately, he, he was a bust and never made it to major league. This is probably only like 25 still. But, um, but yeah, it, long term, the Brewers really, you know, have not been big as big players like some of the big spending teams in the international market. But I think that they have made uh, inroads in that uh, department, definitely. And, and like Vince said, Academies that have been set up like Solomon Torres has been really helpful um, over the, over the years. So um, we're going to bring back a, a segment we haven't done in a while. I know that we've been in contact with our Meyer league analyst, Brandon, he hasn't been on any of our podcasts, but he did supply me with a list of the top 30 future brewers. Um, so um, if you guys want to hold tight, I'll quick go over that list. Um, starting with number 30, we've got Ernesto Martinez, uh, 20, 
two-year-old first baseman. 29, we've got Thomas Dillard, a 24-year-old first baseman. 28. Any relation to Tim? No, unfortunately not. But they are both from the South. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Miguel yeah. Sanchez, a 28-year-old um, pitcher. Uh, 27, we've got uh, Victor. Hey, Craig, hey, Craig we're going to jump in at a few of these, right? Because we just want to, I just want to point out Miguel Sanchez, he pitched uh, in Milwaukee for a couple months last year. Yeah. He actually did pretty well. Still has prospect status. In fact, another guy on this list, Jake Cousins, must not have gone over the threshold either. He's on the list at 22. So I'm, yeah. instead of even doing the numbers, I'm just going to rattle off for the up until we get to the top 10, I'm just going to rattle off the names of the guys and the positions they have. So 27. Okay. Victor, Victor Castienda, right handed pitcher. Gabe Holt, second baseman. Abner Uribe, a right handed pitcher. Logan Henderson, right handed pitcher. Jeremy Vargas, an infielder, um, who's only 18. Uh, and then we got Jay Cousins, who you mentioned, a right hander who pitched at the major league level. 21, we've got Corey Holland, outfielder. And then uh, we get over to Russell Smith, a left handed pitcher. Carlos Rodriguez, an outfielder, 21 years old. At 18, we've got Felix Valerio, who was acquired from the New York Mets, I know, last year, 21. Uh, Jackson Trezo at 17. Antoine Kelly at 16. Then we've got Henry Mendez at 15. And um, let's see. We've got Ed- Eduardo Garcia, shortstop. Freddy Zor- Zamara, also a shortstop, 23. Xavier Warren, a catcher third baseman, number 12. And Mario Feliciano, um, and, uh, catcher at number 11. So that brings us to the top 10, which um, I'll, I'll go over these a, a little more. In depth. Number 10, we've got Jefferson Cuero, a 19 year old rookie ball catcher. And then um, number nine, Joe Gray was a former second round pick a couple of years ago. He's now 21 in high A. He had a huge season as an outfield, a big breakout. He's at number nine. Number eight is Tyler Black, a second baseman out of college that we drafted in the second round last year, or a supplemental first round, I think it was. Um, and then uh, we've got, he's at number eight. Number seven, we've got Bryce Trang, a former first round pick. He's 22 now at AAA. Number six, we've got another big group of Niners last year, Joey Weimer, outfielder out of college we drafted a few years ago. Now, and then number five is our number one pick from last year, Sal Freelich, an outfielder who's 21 in high A. And then number four, Ethan Small, left handed pitcher, a former first round pick. He's now at Triple A, knocking on the door at the majors. And the to the top three, we've got Garrett Mitchell, former first round pitch, pick, outfielder is 23 at double A. And number two, Aaron Ashby, left hand pitcher, 23, obviously pitched for the Brewers even in the playoffs last year. And the number one guy on Brandon's list is still Edber Perez, who's only 18 at low A, outfielder with a high ceiling. And that's our top 30 future Brewers, guys. Um, I will want to point Dan out. And Hedberg. Oh, go ahead. Ed Hedbert's the son of former Milwaukee Brewers outfielder Robert Perez. That is correct. And yeah, I really like him as a prospect. Um, I will point out that Baseball America just uh, released, I believe, yesterday their top 100 prospects. And unfortunately, the Brewers only had one player who made the list, and that was actually Aaron Ashby at number 37. Um, so I don't know. He's obviously someone who is in a big, going to be a big part of the 2020 to brewer plan so um i guess what are your thoughts on on the list overall if there are any guys that stand out to you uh i'm personally well i agree with the ashby uh recognition i think that he really is going to be an exciting guy to watch for the next few years i i i know he had a i i still remember his first game that he got called up when he started against the cubs he gave up like seven runs in the first inning and the my favorite game from 2021 when the brewers came back and ended up winning by seven runs. Um, but I thought that outside of that game, he actually pitched really well for Milwaukee down the stretch. And he, he's kind of, a, he, to me, he is, is a big lefty. He's got some, some really electric stuff and I, I find it to be really entertaining and uh, I'm very excited about him. I'm a little surprised that Garrett Mitchell hasn't gotten a little bit more love 
nationally by Baseball America and other publications. I think that he is um, legitimately in the top handful of at least the, the, I, I would put him somewhere between 50 and 75 on that list um, of Baseball America prospects. Um, I think that he's being a little underrated. That being said, you know, this is partly a product of Brewer's success. We've made the playoffs, you know, since 2018 every single season. So, of course, we're going to be drafting lower than other teams. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll take it. My guess is, is that amongst the guys on this list that you read their names of, Craig, we're, we're probably going to lose a couple of these guys as soon as the lockout is done because we're going to have to, you know, trade for a power-hitting first baseman. And some of these guys are going to come off the Brewer's list. And I'm okay with that, given the window that we've got right now with, Yelich and more importantly with Peralta and with um, Woodruff and you know with Burns and our starting rotation being what it is so I I think we're kind of in win now mode again. Um, is there any chance that SP winds up getting another chance at starting or do you think that he's uh, going to be uh, relegated to the bullpen? Well, it depends who we trade for Matt Olson. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think no matter what, if he's on the Brewers or a trade in our team, Aaron Ashby's future in the major leagues will be as a starter. Yes, Scott. But, but I mean, I'm looking to one. They're going to trade him, Scotty. I think that we could, you know, if we trade, well, I guess we could, but if we trade a, a guy like Hauser, or we trade somebody uh, like Lauer, we, we definitely, I could think, could put him in our starting rotation. Well, I was thinking if we were going to throw him in the starting rotation, it would be. Because to me, anyway, it kind of seems like if we're going to go out and acquire a bat, which I think that we absolutely have to do, <laughs> what are you doing, dog? Um, if we're absolutely going to do that, then I think um, it, it almost makes me wonder if, um, if Lauer is more likely to be traded. Because I don't think that we're going to want two lefties in a starting rotation. But, I mean, there's plenty of room, obviously, on the, on the roster for both of them. It's not like we have to. But it kind of makes me wonder if, because I guess I thought going into the offseason that Hauser would be the more likely that should be traded between him and Lauer, but um, now I'm not so sure. That's a great point. But it is a great list. I don't know. Why are we so low on Jake? Why, or why is Brandon so low on Jake Cousins? He had him in the, a lower yeah, Jake, tier than what I thought. I mean, Jake, Jake Cousins had a decent amount of major league success last year as well. I mean, yeah, I, I felt like Jake, ranked high, I felt like Jake higher, was but, a really but, solid part of our bullpen. And I think he'll continue to be. And, and uh, I mean, when I first saw him pitch, I, like my, my mouth literally dropped it because I actually think he, the slider that he showed was like one of the best ones <clears throat> seen a brewer have possibly like ever. Um, and and to, to have that weapon in the bullpen, I mean, I, I, I expect great things from him, but these type of guys sometimes, you know, if they can't find their control, uh, came out on the bullpen pretty quickly, even though they, they have like one awesome pitch or like that or whatever. But I mean, Jake Cousins, Cousins literally came out of nowhere and, and kudos to the Brewers front office for identifying him, um, for the role. And, and I hope he returns in a high, in a high leverage role or, or in any, any part of the bullpen that really strengthens the Brewer bullpen to have a guy like that. Jake, Jake Cousins gave up 19 walks last year, one of which was intentional, but he had 44 strikeouts. And he did that, you know, in 30 games with 30 innings pitched. I, I, you know, to me, looking back on the 2021 season, we wouldn't have made the playoffs without a guy like Jake Cousins in our bullpen. You could argue that, you know, Cousins and, and you know, there were, there were others as well that certainly were a big part of things. But I think that he was one of the more underrated pieces of our bullpen last season, no question about it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That injury really kind of set us back. But <clears throat> yeah, no, I I agree. I mean, it, it, certainly he was he was a big part. Um, in any event, I don't think he hit a two point seventy ERA last year in thirty games. I to me that that's huge from a guy who's a rookie, um, who still even has rookie status after his you know thirty games last year somehow. Yeah, but o- overall, Spurs don't have. <laughs> As far as the blue chippers on this list, and, and again, that, that that's just kind of a, a term that's thrown out there. But but when I when I use it, I said like will be possible regular, or, or have a really good chance to be regular major league 
uh, starters as a career. I really think Ashby and Mitchell kind of stand out to me. Obviously, Edward Perez is number one prospect here. I think has the highest ceiling, but him could completely play him out and not make it at the higher levels of minor leagues. If he does make it, he could be like a borderline all-star. But these other guys, I think Mitchell and Ashby are could be penciled in. If I had to say that, uh, you know, like here, Mitchell turned out to be someone like Charlie Blackman, in my opinion, who would be a good leadoff hitter and you know lots of speed, great defense in center field, but maybe not have a super long career. Uh, and then also. Um, Aaron, Aaron Ashby, I think has the upside of at least a, like a number three starter, if not more. Um, and so those are some pretty solid blue chip guys, but overall, you know, we don't have any of these, you know, like possible hall of fame type guys like on, um, in this system right now. Um, so with that being said, I don't think Vince pointed out the fact that we have gotta be in go for it mode. I mean, we only have hater for two more seasons and we, you know, we've got um, Burns and Woodruff, I think, for three more seasons apiece, and for all tell you, a little longer than that. But um, those are the guys that are going to be the core from our pitching staff that we've got to make the offense click during this time frame. And we can't just assume Kristen Yell and Keston here are going to bounce back from their fix 2020, well, both the last two seasons, really, um, and, and be quality major leaguers for sure. So I think we do have to make a trade for a bat because I, I really don't foresee us signing one as a free agent that are still out there. And so I think we probably really do have to trade for a bat and whether or not we do it before the season starts, I don't know. I'm very concerned with what short time frame there may be between when the CBA gets agreed on and when the ball players actually hit the field and start playing in games. I, it's going to be interesting. Uh, that's for sure. But uh, overall, there's really no one that I, I'd say is an untouchable in this farm system. When if someone is available via trade, I, I just don't think there's anyone that um, that's in the system that the, the Brewers say he's absolutely off limits. So, uh, but with that being said, our top ten does have a handful of guys who I think have increased their value a little bit over the last year, like Weimer and uh, Joe Gray in, in particular, and even Bryce Trang has kind of retained his value and I think a lot of those guys could be really good trade pieces if indeed we can bring someone on board uh, either before the season or sometime during the season as we know last year the Brewers like to stay active in the trade trade department all year long as we acquired our biggest trade acquisition last year and Willie Damas um, you know I think just before you know at the start of May so um, whatever is going to happen I think the Brewers are still going to be in that go for it mode at least I, I hope they are so uh, so, Craig, I got to ask you, you mentioned if he was going to be possibly traded, but where do you think that Terang might fit into a future uh, Brewers role at the big league level if we do keep him? Well, obviously, um, when we drafted him, we didn't have um, Louis Urias and we didn't have Colton Wong on the team um, or Adamas for that matter. So if you're really looking at the middle of our, our infield, it seems pretty well, at, you know, take of here. <laughs> with the guys who are at the major league level, because all those guys are pretty young. Uh, even Wong is on the younger side and he's under contract for a little bit more. So, but with that being said, I mean, he profiles profile as a pretty good utility player, which the, I know the Brewers love versatility and he can play all around the infield, but, and he's athletic enough, I'm sure to even hit, hit the outfield if necessary, but he, he seems like a pretty good tra training candidate just because of the depth that we have at those positions. Um, but, uh, and then we, we even drafted Tyler Black who's a second baseman in the second in the supplemental first round, I think last year. So, I mean, that's another right there. So again, it's always good to have that depth uh, due to injury and whatnot, but you know, as trade bait, it's always good to have that as well. So he, I think he'd be a prime candidate to possibly get moved if indeed he can re retain his value going into the season. So, yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, I don't know if there's anything else you guys want to talk to. I do have a rapid nine here if we want to get to that. Hmm. Yeah, let's, Come on. let's do it. And Scott, take your time on this one. Don't don't feel the need for it to be too fast or or too rapid or anything of that nature. Just so you know. Well, I just what happens if I have like an anecdote or a story that could really sure. help no, illustrate sure. my point to all the fans. Yeah, sure. Would that be something yeah. that I would maybe, you know, put in my pocket or should I, um, no, you know, maybe no, no. illustrate it? 
No, the listeners, the listeners, especially the folks in West Dallas, would love to hear it. Okay. Well, um, so, I mean, if if the fans want it, I guess. How can I say no to them? And the, the, first, awesome. the first inning question is a little bit more elaborate, so we can all take our time a little bit on this one. It's actually, um, if, oh boy. since, well, believe it or not, guys, we don't, the, the Baseball Writers Association um, has not given us or Scott's interns a, a vote, an actual a Hall of Fame vote, but had each of us have one here that's on the podcast, and who came what? Anywhere from one to five players that would be on that you would vote for on the current ballot. Vince, do you want to start off? Yeah, I'll start off. I, I vote for Bonds. I vote for Clemens. I vote for David Ortiz. Um, I'll I'd vote for Sheffield too. I mean, I yeah, I, I I'll, I'll cap it at that. I'll vote for those four. Okay. Scott? Huh. Um, boy. Um, Ortiz is really a, kind of an anomaly because he is kind of like a DH, but he is, um, you know, also a very good hitter. He was, I mean, he was the heart and soul of, you know, the several championship teams. So Three of them. And he, Three championship teams. And he, yeah. I mean, and don't get me wrong. I mean, that, that's probably not the argument I want to make because there's plenty of people out there that, you know, that were on bad teams for a long time and made the haul and deserve it. They fell. But, um, I don't know. I, I guess I would vote for all those people, uh, except for Gary Sheffield. I would probably vote for Schilling as well. And I think that's it. I mean, among them, I guess he would be the only like quote clean player. Right. I don't know. Who? But, Schilling? Yeah, I don't think Schilling yeah. has been accused of using any sort of, you know, performance enhancing stuff. Yeah, that's, that's probably true. I don't know if that stock is really real blood, though. I don't know. Might have just well, been no for a knows, fact. No one I've that. seen, I've watched a lot of WWE, and I could tell. Not, no, I have no idea. But that's the question. So when you're talking about this ballot, do you do you think about guys that look you look at the numbers or do you think about guys that haven't been implicated in anything? Or do you look at guys compared to the others in the Hall of Fame at their position? You know, so to me that's why Sheffield gets in. I you know, a guy who's got five hundred plus home runs. How do you keep him out? You know, I'd probably put on that, you know, like the little plaque that they get and everything and it gives a synopsis or whatever. I, I, it yeah. would say something like, although tested positive for, you know, like it would be on that plaque so that people knew right. that you right. still get in the hall. That's the compromise like it, that I can give. Yeah, it's a part of the history of the game. I mean, so you've got that. You're going to make like a, the, like, why know. not just make like asterisk plaques? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, um, I, I guess. I mean, well, what we can discuss these guys a little bit more in this this kind of like this is like a thirty pitch first inning or something. But um, I'll say I'm gonna be a little bit more stingy with my votes, and the only the only two I'd for sure vote for, and I'd have to look a little bit more in depth whether or not I'd vote for more. But I think I'd for sure vote for Scott Rowland and uh, David Ortiz, and that's that's probably the only ones I know for sure. So Scott Rowland's a good pick, uh, Craigers. That's that's a nice pick. Hey, how do you? I, I know that neither one of you picked him, but um, how opposed would you be to Omar Vizquel? No. I, I just don't think uh, – I mean, <laughs> he, he's a defensive wizard. Great argument, great argument, Scotty. That was a good one. Uh, <laughs> that was my Mark Antonio confession. I'm sorry, uh, to elaborate slightly – I would say that there is such a thing as overvaluing defense while looking at the mediocrity of offense. And as much as I love Omar Vizquel, I love those middle infielders that, you know, that can do absolutely anything. But, like, um, you just – unfortunately, there's just not enough there. Like, there really it's isn't. I mean, he, the yes, game, he's – It's 50% of the game, though. Um, it really isn't, though. I mean, defense, like, I understand you're out on the field on defense for half the game, but, like, 
And granted, I will admit that like shortstop is obviously like one of the most valuable defensive positions out there, but it's just, unfortunately the value just isn't, it's not enough for me, unfortunately, but I respect your opinion. No, no, I didn't vote for him either. I was just trying, kind of playing. I, mean, <laughs> I, I just don't think – I think if he had that great defense and he at least showed, like – like, he'd have to still show a lot more offensively to have a balance, um, you know, a little bit more of a balance, I, I think, for him to be truly, you know, a Hall – because I think Hall of Famer is really – and again, there's Hall of Famers that are in there that are like probably terrible defensively, like David Ortiz, or maybe never even put a glove. On. So I mean, do you detract like Edgar that? Martinez? Yeah. So like Edgar- David Ortiz. Well, oh, but whatever, David's yeah. not in yet. So so say like Edgar Martinez, you know. Paul Molitor. Ooh. No, no, no. Nice Molitor played that. like five positions, Scott. Molitor played five positions. Yeah, but he didn't play any of them very well and he was always hurt. He played half his career at DH. I mean, well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying he played when hurt, which is something. He's got some versatility. I mean, yeah, I, I think that the better comparison. The I think the better comparison, Omar Vizquel, is somebody like somebody like. I mean, he's probably a little bit better, but Ozzy Smith, right? I mean, I I, I, like, I do agree with the events that like if you really think about it, like the 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 game is like. 50 50 but i think when the baseball writers vote for this and think hall of fame i think they they think offensive number is nine percent defensive skill like ten percent of the vote like that probably no i agree craig but i mean ozzy okay so i I had our intern look it up ozzy smith hit 262 in his career he had a 337 obp he had a total of 28 career home runs yeah but that backflip though (laughs) right that was (laughs) That was uh that was an old vine. I think I bought no, it. No, I no, I I I totally agree with you guys. I'm just I'm just pointing it out that you know there are even you, you like Bill Mazeroski is another one. He didn't get into the hall until 2001. He played in the 60s and it was a veterans committee vote, but <clears throat> he was the best defensive second baseman of his era. On the flip side of that, when yeah, a lot lot of people, we were mentioning that everyone gets over those benchmarks like 500 homers, 3,000 hits are all automatically shoe ins. That might change going forward because of the amount of runs I've been hit in the last uh, 30 years. But as an example of that, yeah, the, the the tricky part that always to me is like like closers with really good save totals. That that doesn't really yeah for me. They they have to be like the the most dominant closer of their era. They're just like racked up 600 saves um, or something like that. Like as an example, Billy Wagner. He was a really really good closer. And he, and but was he the most dominant? Club Until he wasn't. Era? I, well, he was he was for a couple of seasons, but not the duration of his career. I mean, we really don't have that many closers in the Hall of Fame right now, right? We've got Goose Gossage, Raleigh Fingers, Bruce Suter, Mariano Rivera, Trevor Hoffman, Dennis Eckersley, and is there anyone else besides those six? That's not that a I can think of. But I, I mean, just an, yeah. So Billy Wagner would be right on that fringe, though. But just like Todd Helton, I don't think we'll quite get in either. And again, he'll probably just be detracted by awesome offensive numbers or a little bit inflated by Coors. I think he will get dinged for that. Unfortunately, it's not really his fault. But I, I don't think if he if he played for like the Brewers his whole career, I don't think he would be anywhere near a Hall of Famer. Uh, so I, although Larry although Larry Walker got in, yeah, but he he had a good portion of his career at the Expos too. Um, but yeah, yeah that's true. He, yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, so, but, I mean, would you get? None, none of us said that we'd vote for Helton, so there had to been a reason. For no, him, he did put up good numbers. Anyone, that, anyone who can hit at Coors Field can hit at any other ballpark, and that's a direct quote from Dean Taylor. <laughs> right well, we let's let's, let's put it this way. No. So Todd Helton hit 369 <laughs> career bombs. He had 316 as his batting average. Larry Walker. Ended with 383 bombs and hit 313. So I I don't know. I mean Walker spent 10 years with Colorado, six years with Montreal, two years with the Cardinals. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, so anyway, this has been a very long first thing, very interesting discussion. We we'll probably do a whole show just on Hall of Fame uh, philosophies, but um, let's let's move on yeah. to the second inning, guys. Um, all right, so. Now make your prediction. Who do you think will actually get in on Tuesday uh, through the vote? Scott started off. Who do you think will actually get in? 
Um, nobody. Oh, interesting. That's. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. You might but... be right. No, you might be right, Scotty. I'm going to go with. Um, I'm going to say Ortiz gets in and no one else uh, on this vote. I I will say that. Um, and again, this isn't science, but I will say that our our anonymous source, Tom Carter, he has a vote, and he said that that's what he did is just Ortiz. Interesting. So that's why I'm going with that. I, I'm going to go with just Scott Rowland, and I think David Ortiz will fall just short, but get in in, a, in one of the next couple of years. Interesting. What did you talk to Tom or not? Our anonymous source, Tom Carter. Uh, TC. I didn't even know he wanted to be called Tom Carter on the on the podcast because I was talking to Tom Carter the other day and I was like, Tom, what do you think? And he was like, Hey, when you're on the air, just call me like Tom and that's it. And I was like, okay, got it. So I said, from now on, I'm just going to say Tom or Tom T and not Tom Carter. Well, it's, I mean, it's his name is Tom Carter. That's, I mean, it's what we have to call him, right? Just, just for anonymity though, I was going to, but I guess why be anonymous at this point? Right. So we can go. How about we go with Thomas <laughs> Carter? Yeah, I don't think people would be able to connect the dots on that. <laughs> we should be fine with that. All right. Good. <laughs> All right. Third inning, guys. Vince will start this one off. Um, now, obviously, going into the lockout, there's still a pretty good handful of decent free agents out there on the market. Now, I don't expect the Brewers to necessarily break the bank for anything. But just let's say we could have our brothers and sign any of these free agents that are still out there that, that we want. Who is what, what current free agent would you add to the Brewers if money was not a, an option or a concern, I should say? Um, boy, a free agent? I I don't know that I'm really looking at many. I mean, if money was no option, I'd say Cassianos, you put him in the outfield. Um, yeah, I, I guess him. That's I, a good I pick. Be my number one pick. Yeah, no, we need we need bats. And in fact, uh, going back to your original point, uh, like 20 minutes ago, Craig, I, I think we need two bats still. I mean, I know we got Hunter Renfro right before the lockout happened, and that's great. But to me, as we mentioned in previous episodes, he just replaces Garcia. He doesn't really improve us at all. So I think that we need two bats still. So yeah, I'd go to Cassiano. I still, hmm. I still trade from, I'd still trade from Matt Olson. Yep. Well, yeah, that is really good, but wait, okay. So Cassiano is your free agent pick or wait. Yeah. Craig said it had to be a free you agent. Add any, anyone okay. that's still out there as a free agent. And there's at least, you know, up upwards of like probably 30 to 50 guys still out there. But I mean, there's still some top line, even like hall of famers, like, Clayton Kershaw that you could add again just to help the Brewers without money being an object. Who would you add? I see. Okay. Well, I know it sounds selfish, but I would add myself. Not because I could add a lot of offensive prowess to the team or defensive, but I have a lot of heart. And I think um <laughs> You're I think I'd have a great <laughs> clubhouse presence. I'd be a leader in the clubhouse. I'd be like Will Ferrell when we screwed up. I'd just start hitting chairs. And, I don't know. That was a good thing. Um, no. I'll... God, I think your clubhouse <laughs> presence is so-so. It kind of depends on the day. I mean, some days you feel like taping and some days you don't. <laughs> some, days, no, that's true. Some, days you, some days you feel like driving and some days you don't. Although you don't know. I mean, you're not much of a team player, really. Some days I wake up and I notice it's a doubleheader and I say, let's play one. <laughs> or let's, let's, let's play a half and go get some beer. <laughs> that could be a great t-shirt. If we open up our store again, let's play one. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you're on that, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes we think our own jokes are the funniest. It's not always true. But, no, um, true. So who's your friend? Okay, in all seriousness, um, no, but if there is a baseball strike and they bring out scabs, I'm in. Sorry, I'm no, I'm on the record. No I am strike. In. There's no strike. There's a lockout. There's a lockout. Well, if they decide to have the season without players and they just bring in people, I am there people. as a DH, and I'm going to wear a helmet with a mask over it. 
and two cups. <laughs> but um, to finally answer the question, um, two cups. Hill it loses a lot of his value, but I think that you could probably, assuming that let's say that the NL has a DH, um, this will definitely probably impress Bowman and Selena. But um, Carlos Correa's is bad is uh, pretty solid, and I'd love to see them for the lineup. So if um, uh, yeah. if we can get 150 okay. games out of him by giving him a spell and having him play DH, you know, a third to half the time, um, I'd be all for that. If we're yeah, in a pipe dream world where money is no, on, I mean we 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 no Scott, that's a good bit. We went to we went to a decent amount of Astros games last year, living here in Houston, and. Correa is awesome. I mean, he he really is the real deal. He's he's the best shortstop in the American League, in my opinion. Bar oh, now. we definitely make room for him. Um, I'll go with Chris Bryant just because he could fill in at the big right-handed kind of power bat and fill in at uh, outfield or, or third base. Um, okay, let's move on to the <laughs> inning. Um, Craig, you had no comments about Scott's addition of himself to the roster as the first. 20 minutes of his answer i can't believe it <laughs> See, you guys would be there too i mean i'd put in a good word for you i assume that was just or so his interns got on the list of actual free agents so so that was good um, <laughs> oh this is my softball free agent list ah forget it <laughs> Four things, guys start us off on this one um which of the Brewers' top 10 prospects would you most likely refuse to trade if you could pick one? Um, in our top 10, hang on, let me just reference it really quick again. Because, um, Please don't okay. say Um, probably recency bias here, but um, I'm not going to trade Ashby. I really like what he showed um, last year. Um, Me too. Just, I was really, really happy with everything. I mean, the fact that he had the confidence to throw him out there and, he, and you know, pitch in, you know, obviously pivotal games down the stretch. And um, I don't know. I actually thought that there was a chance that um, uh, Devin Williams was going to get Grisham after – you know, after he punched the wall, like, um, and, and for the record, I don't think that Grisham was traded because the very last thing he did with the Brewers was make an error, but uh, in the playoff game, it cost us it, and I was there, and it was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, thanks. Scott, I was standing I, next to you, I know. Yeah. I know, it was pretty gut wrenching. But um, I, I, um, I almost wondered if Williams was going to, like, if that was going to, you know, send a message like, um, hey, we're the Milwaukee Brewers. We take the playoffs seriously because we don't get here that often, and you know you can't you can't be pulling stunts like that. So I, I actually thought that there there's a legitimate chance that he could get traded still before opening day. Um, but um, and if that's the case, then I, I definitely want a bullpen uh, as bolstered as possible. And I think that Ashby, uh, you know, he contributes there. So, so that's why I pick him. My brother, uh, my brother got me a Devin Williams um, autographed picture for Christmas, and he bought it apparently before the wall was punched or something. And he used so sorry when he gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> before the wall was punched. Hey, you thinking of fifth in the photo? <laughs> like, no, I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> he, he's like, I know you just went off about this guy a few nights ago and we just, you know, talked baseball and, you know, sort of got this beforehand. But um, he was the reigning rookie of the year at that point. <laughs> he signs it uh, from your favorite wall banger with warm wishes. <laughs> no, no, he couldn't sign it after he punched the wall, Craig. Oh yeah, you're right. His hand was demolished. <laughs> that would be funny though if you could get him to sign an old Tommy Stadium brick or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> see, see if we can get an inscription. Yeah, that's a good idea. All good right, point. so Vince, which which prospect would you not want to trade? Ashby. Uh, I I want well. Ashby. You know the fact that we've got another six years, at least on the current CBA, <clears throat> that. Um, 
we've had, we would, we would have them, I think, for another six full years of team control. <clears throat> to me, that's invaluable in a starting pitcher, so I would I would choose him as my number one. Yeah, I, I think keep he, I think he'd list. really make our, our rotation just really legit with the <clears throat> three near aces we already have. And then, yeah. in fact, in almost every magazine I've seen this offseason, the, our, our three aces are all ranked in the top 10 pitchers of in baseball. So, um, so as, yeah, I mean, it's so, it's so hard right now without knowing whether teams are, it, this, this winter is just so weird. We've got no hot stove league to go on. We had a couple of weeks, right. Between the world yeah. series and the lockout, but, um, it'll be really interesting to kind of see what happens. I, I, well, Craig, keep going with your rapping. I got one question to ask you guys before we end the show, but, um, okay, well, don't forget Ooh. what that is. Yeah, uh, I'll just, I'll just ask me too, but I'll say Edward Perez uh, just because I, I like his potential superstar qualities. But and actually, go ahead and go ahead and ask your question now, Vince. I'm not sure if we'll actually make it. Okay. No, I don't mean to, to 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 ruin the flow here, but what what to what date to you guys is sort of the drop dead date? These, these you know. Hey, are you kidding me? That, that's actually my. That's the sixth inning question. Well, Craig, I never listened during our pre-production meeting. I was at the oh, okay. Oh, well, well, let's wait on that. Then. that that's okay. Good. All right. Okay. So fifth, I didn't fifth know. inning. I didn't know. Uh, which of the which top ten Brewers prospect are you most willing to part with? Hmm. Corey Ray still a top ten. I wasn't listening. No. Um. No, he's not. He's top thirty six. Hold though. on. All right, Scotty, you go. I'm going to look at the list. Wow. That, wait, top 10 prospects that I have to get rid of? The, yeah, you're most willing to get rid of. Um, okay. I'm going to go with, oh, I'll go with Tyler Black. <laughs> Very good pick. <laughs> Scott. Great pick. He's in the top 10, right? Yep. He's nine. I just don't oh. know anything about him. He plays multiple positions. We can sign anybody that he's like. Well, he's like Scott's Curry going. Strang. I'll I'll just go with Bryce Trang. What we kind what? Of, that was my pick, Craig. Why would you? <sighs> why why? just because of Adamus? Um, just because we are absolutely stacked in middle infield for now. Um, it's clearly a position that we load up on because we just think let's just draft all middle infielders forever, or like just collect them. Because, um, you know, they're usually athletic enough that you can move them around. Whereas, you know, if you have somebody that can only play like first or, you know, one of the corners or corner outfield or something like that, um, they're kind of stuck there. They're, you're not going to be like, hey, um, I don't know. Um, and well, since we got rid of him, hey, Abigail Garcia, we're going to need you to play short today. Like that's not going to happen. So I don't know. Um, it just seems like that's a position that we were just so completely fast on. But it, it is a position that we value, so I don't necessarily think that we will trade him. Yeah. And again, he, I think knocking on the door of the majors, it kind of just leaves an opportunity. So why not be with another club? But uh, I think that's what makes him so valuable too, though, is that he's. Like he's basically ready. Yeah. Um, I, so since he went with, and Frank, I don't think he has the highest ceiling, but he's kind of a, a high floor. Since you went with Frank, then I'll just go with Joey Weimer, who's number six. He's he was one of only two minor leaguers last season that had twenty five plus homers and thirty plus steals, but I think he's. It's kind of he, he did it at high A, and I think the numbers were a little bit inflated. So I think why not trade him high? Because I really didn't think much of him as a prospect prior to this year. So I'll just go with him because I think it's kind of like a, a still high situation. What? Yeah. I could be wrong. That's what I'll go with. All right. So moving on to the sixth inning. If you had to guess the date of when the CBA gets agreed upon, Jeez, Craig. Is that what your is that what your question was going to be, Vince? Nah, nah, close. No, you're close. You're too close. I I was going to say it was close. What's the, what's the drop dead date that we would no longer be able to have a regular regularly scheduled season? 
Oh. Well, hopefully Scott picks a date that's before whatever that is, because I would like for it to be a regular scheduled season. But in all seriousness, what let's go around the horn. Um, who wants? Unfortunately, I think Scott's your turn first. What day would do you think the CBA will be agree? Uh, the actual date, month, and date that you think the CBA will get agreed upon? Um, I got to check my calendar because I don't think it's going to happen on a weekend. Um, okay, but I got a ballpark in mind here, so we're getting there. You know what? I'm just not going to look at the stupid calendar. It's going to take too long. Um, March 1st. Okay. Um, that's good. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. I'm, if they go past that they're going to ruin opening day. The guys are going to need at least, you know, four weeks of spring training, right? Three weeks of spring training, something like that. So I'll say, I'll say spring training starts on March 7th and they figured it out over that weekend. So we'll say March 6th, March 5th. Yep. March 5th. Okay. I'll go with, March 14th. Jeez. But I, I don't trust these guys. So, can throw them. So, all right. Well, no, we're all trusting them, though, to actually get it done before the season starts, right? That's, that's a good sign. Yeah, I hope so. Um, I think the owners want to start 4th of July again. <laughs> uh. All right. Seventh inning. That's depressing. Um, all right. Um, what we, we, we talked about the beginning of this podcast that our, our colleague, our longtime colleague, um, Mr. Exclusive, we call him, um, Tom Hardicourt of the Milwaukee journal that is retiring as of today or whatnot. Um, What is your favorite Tom Hardicourt Brewer story that he has ever broke? He's never broken a story in his life. The guy. Are you what about his retirement? Yeah, he's retired. <laughs> our, our uh, yeah, Chad, Chad, I know our colleague Chad Collins is working on our on the story that we're going to put up on our website, brewerreview.com. I think that he. Uh, That's not our website anymore. Oh, well, I think that Chad is saying that this is the first story that Tom has ever broken about the Brewers, but I wouldn't really know because I'm blocked from reading any of the things that he writes. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for your service. Thanks for the memories. It was great. All right. Well, that 36 was, years. That was a very quick seventh inning because, like I said, we all had the same answer. There, we hadn't broken anything. Um, Let's move on to the yeah, but thirty six years in the business. That's um, you know, that's double what I've done. So, <laughs> the way to go, Tom. Yeah, Scott, you've only been in, as me. you've only been in this whole best compliment I've ever given. You've only been in the journalism racket since like two thousand four, right? Yeah, so you're only eighteen years in. Wow. All right, yeah. I'm eighth inning. But I'm not retired yet, so. Then. <sighs> Keep your eye on the rear view mirror, Tom. You got to apply for a job, Scott. All right. Um, let's, Vince is going to have to start. <laughs> Favorite Brook Review road trip that Scott drove during? Scott's never driven in any of the road trips ever Ooh. that we've ever taken in the history of our. Now, thank you, hard, though. Home. Has there been well, I've known I've known y'all. I met you in the I met you in uh, January of 2001. Is when I met both of you guys, which was at orientation at a trailer in the parking lot, in Miller Park. Uh, County Stadium was still up, not demolished yet. Um, I don't think I've ever once. No, that since that point, driven sometime in the like the late 2000. Uh, like around 2007 or eight, I think 
I, no. I, I was earmarked to drive though to Wrigley Field, which would technically be like, yeah, but, a trip. But no, Miss Brown drove. Oh. All right, you're right. I, I was thinking of that one, but I think you're right, Vince. So I'm gonna have to go with uh, one time Scott when I was living with him. He actually had to ride. Drive, I guess my favorite Brook Review road trip with Scott was when he drove me to pick up my car that was in the shop um, at the time. That's nice of him. Yeah, so yeah. Only like two miles away, but uh, that was probably my favorite Brook Review road trip where Scott drove. So it was the only the furthest that Scott has ever driven me, and it was just the one time ever, is when we drove to KFC and we met Johnny Logan on Miller Park South, <laughs> Miller Park Way. South. There you go. That's got to be your official one then. Yeah, the road trip was in. I could still see my car from as far as we went, but yeah. Scott, what's your favorite <laughs> road trip? Poor Johnny Logan. Uh, he was haggling. He wanted free chicken because, but like nobody at AKC knew who the hell he was. I felt so bad for him. I didn't too. You're like, look at this old guy. He's trying to get free. Oh, that's Johnny Logan. Oh. <laughs> he said, don't you know who I am? <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, no, Johnny Logan absolutely awesome too. Um, best road trip, I would say, um, uh, even though I only drove for an hour, I... Um, I and I also fell asleep on the freeway while driving in uh, on the outskirts of Pittsburgh for that road trip. That was rough. I was on, and I, I didn't, was on that one. Sorry. No. No, it's just I think it was just me and Craig on that one. Well, where are we gonna go next year, y'all? Texas? I don't know. I don't know what to do with the dog, but we'll have to figure it out, I guess. Yeah, why don't you bring the dog? The dog can stay here in Houston. You're gonna be, a, you can stay at my house. We'll go to, we'll go to the Astros and the Rangers. Maybe I don't know. I don't know if I trust Banjo and Penny together. What? There could Banjo's be some. There nice. could be some Banjo, shenanigans. No, Banjo. Banjo's old. He's Banjo was. Yeah, right, but Penny, Penny needs to be so sometimes. <laughs> Banjo, yeah, Banjo actually. Was, Banjo's neutered, and Banjo was born in 2011, so he's a uh, he's 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 a he's an old guy now. I was at the dog park yesterday, and they're like, "Oh yeah, my dog's like 14 years old, so don't worry, he's he's not gonna, you know, he he won't even run around with your dog." And then he chased my dog around the park and tried to mount her. So no, <laughs> like, Banjo will not try to mount Penny. I promise you. Fair enough. Guys. This is uh. I this think I'm gonna have to leave the rapid nine <laughs> out of most. Of, I'm gonna have to leave the rapid nine out of most future podcasts because these are lasting like an hour and a half somehow when it's supposed to be rapid. Um, but let's wrap this well, up with the ninth. We finally made it to the ninth inning, um, and this is in all seriousness. Could we don't have to elaborate too much? Uh, but this is a pretty big question. What was your actual favorite Brooker Review road trip of all time? Who, who started this one? Um, uh, who? I think Scott starts us off on this one. Oh yeah. So it, um, I, I got, let's say that in order for it to be official Brooker View road trip, it has to have at least two Brooker Review members besides yourself in the trip. Can I go last on this one? Yeah, I'll go. I'll go right now. I'll say that trip. Sorry, Scott, you weren't there, but um, that trip that we took to Nashville. Uh, where Chad stole the wood and we went canoeing or uh, went water rafting on the Ocoee River and Chad almost drowned and then got stung by a batch of copperheads. And that was awesome. Yeah, no, I agree. That That's a pretty good one. Um, great pick, Vince. Um, I guess I'm just going to go all the way back to original road trip with Dave Tolson. Oh, St. Louis. The godfather of the ticket office and uh, and the, the road trip, apparently. Went to St. Louis um, Brewer game. I'll just go with that one, even though there's been tons of great ones. But I know that that was one where uh, me and Scott were both all there. So Yeah, that was a good one. We watched Mean Girls as well. That was nice. And uh, <laughs> we, had a, we had a good run. Uh, well, Craig or with Scotty was watching Mean Girls and playing darts. Uh, at the hotel bar, we uh, 
we had a good run. We got dropped off in East St. Louis somehow by a subway and then Robert helped us to get back to, to oh, across the bridge into the state of Missouri from Illinois. And that was, that was nice as well. Oh yeah, that's right. Didn't you guys get almost attacked several times? Yeah, there was from there were some East wild Texas. dogs. There were some wild dogs, and, and it was it was pouring met, rain. Also, it was pouring rain. The metro let us off in a location that would you would might consider to be less than desirable, but um, but we, we walked through the rain and we walked. eventually made it back to uh, a bar that hosted nightclub bachelorette parties that night. So it was pretty awesome. Yep, we did we did well, and. Um, we're here to tell the tale and it was just kind of like Lewis and Clark in St. Louis. It was great. But I, th I think we had just started our show at the time. So it, it was really kind of something that kind of kicked off uh, a great tradition of road trips, which uh, I hope we're going to continue on in the future. So Scott, did you come up, uh, yep. your interns come up with your favorite yet? Absolutely. Um, yeah. I mean, there were so many that I couldn't pick, so I was just going to pick whichever one you guys didn't pick. That's why I wanted to go last, but um, I mean, we, we have to, you know, on, on our Mount Rushmore of road trips, we have to include uh, the, the original, or as the kids call it now, the OG trip. <laughs> it stands for original gangster, makes no sense, it's stupid. But, um, so we went to Detroit, um, phenomenal city, <laughs> and um, um, no, it, it is a great ballpark, though. And um, um, we got... Kind of last minute tickets from Barnes. Uh, John Barnes, the greatest, top 50 greatest man who ever lived. I think that's, that's fair. And no one's going to argue that. And then, um, no. let's see. Then we asked, oh, and then while we were in Detroit, or no, then I guess we called him back and said, we also need tickets for the weekend series, Brewers and Blue Jays. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you, you guys interviewed Chris. So, so first of all, um, what was Brandon's car? Well, we got to paint a picture you, for the fans. First, first of all, a bird defecated on your shirt in Detroit. It wasn't my shirt. It was Brian. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I was so yeah. I I was pretty short on. Oh, clothes. you were you were wearing it though, Scott. <laughs> yeah, you were. Wearing yeah, that's true. It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, anyway, I, Brand's car, I think, was like some kind of Buick. I was, I'll say it was like a Buick Cutlass or something. It was a big boat. Just look it up. Buick in the Cutlass. Records, That's what Craig. I think. Craig, just look it up in oh, the yeah. police records because you got a ticket, so it's a public record. Oh. No, I, I had an old mobile Cutlass, so I, I was very familiar with that car. But he had like a Buick Saber or something like that. I don't know, or Regal. I don't know. But it, it was some kind of like sedan slash boat, and um. It was six of us driving up in the one vehicle, and it was okay. So the four of us, as you, you fans all know, and then little Rhino and Uncle Junebug, right? I'm not forgetting yep. anybody. Am I? Correct. No, that was a cool um. One. So it was absolutely phenomenal. Um, I know Junebug was like he just loved the Toronto street meet. Like it was just phenomenal, and oh yeah. Um, we got to well wait do you guys interview prince right no well, i don't yeah, know we, yeah, I can't prince really we did prince and ricky the problem was is that craig kept his number two camera place placement on gentlemen who were coming out of the showers while we were interviewing so we carlos lee was naked and i think that was actually you running the camera i mean and then that is my fault because i didn't train you on something like that i thought that no, i didn't know i thought that was common sense but yeah. No, no. no. But, yeah. But no, I mean, that, uh, that's a great pick, Scott, because actually, believe it or not, of all the road trips we took over all the years, that's the only trip I think that all four of us, uh, Vince, Scott, myself, and Chad, were all, to, all on the same trip, believe it or not. Really? Wait, Scotty, didn't you ever go to Nashville? Yeah, we did. You got you um, know, Doug. Did, did yeah, Chad but not come Chad. On that trip? Huh. We went to West Virginia. I'm pretty sure I drank with Chad at the uh, Nashville bar. Oh yeah, we went to um, we went yeah, to we some... did, Craig. Yeah, we went to Nashville together because that's when you uh, you vomited in the back of that taxi cab and then all over the floor of that motel. Oh yeah, you're right. 
You're right. We did go to Nashville. Yep. Hey, um, guys, with the Brewers moving, Triple H team moving back to Nashville, I think that we should go back there again this summer. Absolutely. Hmm. Why don't we do one Texas trip and one Nashville trip? I, I assume that great might be fun. It's still open. Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. Uh, well, you're not allowed there, but I am. Um, it'll be fine. Hopefully, they still don't have those 25 cent beers, though. Oh, if I can uh, find a way to town. move back to Wisconsin, then I have somebody that can, uh, you know, watch the dog. I don't really want a kennel or but or border or whatever it is. But um, if I do that, things will be uh, a lot more easier for me to to do. So we'll see how it goes. Well, Scott, you can't just see. You have to make plans and do stuff, like enact a, a plan. Well, I don't know. Apparently, I only get two weeks of vacation a year now at this current job, which is kind of sad. And I actually saved up several days, and they said, yeah, but those are from – uh, 2021. You got to use them by the end of March this year. So I have like two days of vacation that I saved up for, and I'm like, oh, I got to use them. So well, um, right. hopefully, if they can get their act together and we can still have spring training in March, I might be able to use it for something like that. But <sighs> other than that, I don't really know. I don't well, even know if that's possible. Yeah, there should be at least some spring training, according to our pr- predictions, at the end of March. So, yeah, plan on that, Scott. Yeah, you'll be fine. Um, yeah, you'll be fine. All right, guys. So, I think our podcast is uh, getting about the length of a major motion picture at this point. So, we should probably wrap her up. Um, yep. Like Thanks, hesitation. Greg. A major motion picture. Great, great job, guys. Uh, Hopefully we've got another pot. Uh, we'll, we'll tape again in the next week. I'm sure Scott, we can go over our uh, transaction previews for as soon as the lockout is done uh, as, as well. That'd be nice. Yeah. I was actually saying we got to come up with like a contingency plan in case like um, there is some sort of prolonged um, work stoppage or, or whatever you want to call it. Um, but we'll still be here. Don't worry guys. You can still get your fix of, Birds and randomness right here. And thank you so much for listening. Honestly, like uh, some of the messages that I got after the last podcast, I was just like literally beaming. Like I, it made, like it kind of sort of reinvigorated me. Like I was so happy with like just being able to do anything that like makes other people happy. So I'm going, like, I really want to thank our, our listeners. You don't even have to, don't even worry about the five stars and all that. Like, if you think it's good and you think your friends want to listen to it, like, tell them. I mean, that's all, like, that's all I ask. But thank you so that's much. A, that's a great point, Scott. And for those of you who do not write Scott to thank him, uh, please send us an email, podcast with an S at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter, BrewCareview1. Uh, as well, you can follow us on any major uh, podcast uh, app on your iPhone or smartphone generally. All right. Stay classy. Players Association and the owners. And go Brewers. <laughs> go Brewers, guys. Thanks, Chad. Go Brewers. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Figure it out, baseball. We need you, but not as much as you need us. <laughs> do, 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 do.